Hey Battle Ready family, thank you for stopping in today. Today on the Battle Ready Brunch Break, I want to talk about the importance of being in the will of God. Did you know that when you're in the perfect will of God, even though all hell may be coming against you, that you will fare well in the end? But if you get out of the will of God, you're going to see through this story and through this message that it not only will it affect you, but it will affect those around you. You can find this story in the book of Jonah, starting off in chapter 1. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Think about that. In these last days, most of us want to be and and in the presence of God. Most of us want to chase down God. But when God was given Jonah instructions to go and cry out against Nineveh, the Bible says that Jonah went in the absolute opposite direction of God's purpose for him. And he fleed from the presence of God. Now that is a dangerous thing when we flee from the presence of God. In verse 3 says, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid a fare thereof. Think about it. Not only did he flee from the presence of God, he paid a fare to get out of the presence of God. Isn't that insanity? Like, like I said, I spend a lot of time in prayer. I spend a lot of time in God's Word. I want to bathe in the presence of God. I love it when God comes down and inhabits this, this vessel right here, or inhabits my sanctuary that I have set up for Him. But to pay a fare to flee from the presence of God, in my, my opinion, is pretty crazy. And the Bible says, And he went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Now listen, I want you to understand something. In verse 4 it says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. When you get out of the will of God, listen, either all hell will come against you, our God will do everything to get your attention, to get you back in alignment with Him. I always tell people this, that if your spiritual compass is out of whack, then you need to recalibrate it and get back in alignment with the perfect will of God in your life. In verse 5 it says, Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto, God, unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he, and he was laying there fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Everyone to his fellow, come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and what people art thou? In verse 9 it says, And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I, now listen, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fleed from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temptress. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall thy sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. So they took out Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her region. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Question number one I have for you. What was the result? Think about this. What was the result of Jonah's disobedience? Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and to cry out against it. And instead of going to Nineveh, the Bible says he fleed from the presence of God and he went to Tarshish and he paid a fare to flee from God's presence. And when he got on the boat, not only did it affect Jonah's life, but it affected other people's lives that were around him. Question number two, how did Jonah's disobedience affect others? And question number three, 
how and, and I want I want you to answer this from your heart. How does obey how does disobeying God affect you and others? Now in verse 7 it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish and to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And then in verse 10 it says, So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited up Jonah onto dry ground. Think about this. The Bible says that in Jonah's disobedience, it affected those that were around him. And it may be one thing for you to walk away from the will of God. It may be one thing for you to flee from the presence of God. That is something that is completely up to you. But I have to say this, that when, you, when your choices affect others, that, my friends, is when you're in error. Because you may not care a hill of beans about your walk with God. But when God has a plan for you and God has a destiny for you and God is asking you to do things and you flee from that, you have to remember that it will also affect those around you. And so the Bible says that Jonah was cast into the sea and God prepared. God is a provider. He will make a way where there seems to be no way because God would preserve Jonah because God still had a plan for Jonah to do. And the Bible says God prepared a whale and the whale swallowed up Jonah. And while Jonah was in the belly of the whale, he cried out to the Lord and he petitioned God and he had a great prayer from there to verse 9. And in verse 10, the Bible says, So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah on dry land. Now, you got to understand something. The people of Nineveh worshipped the sea. It worshipped the whale. And so when the whale vomited up Jonah, they would perceive Jonah as a god. And so, it would, it, so even though Jonah's disobedience would put his life in danger and others' life in danger. And I think about it, when Jonah, when, when the storm was raging and that ship was about to be turned upside down, the Bible says that Jonah had the audacity to go downstairs and to go to sleep. And they woken him up and they said, what did you do? And he was put in the belly of the whale and the whale vomited him up. And in Washington chapter 3 of Jonah, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Question number four, true or false, the mercies of God give us, as believers, a second chance for a greater cause. True or false, the mercies of God give us, as believers, a second chance for a greater cause. Verse three, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed the fast, put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. Then the word, of the, then the word came to the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe and, and, and covered himself in sackcloth cloth and ashes. Verse 10. Then, now listen to this. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. You want to talk about the mercies of God. That when, Mo, when, when, when Jonah was given a second chance, when, when, when Jonah in his disobedience and was thrown into the sea, and God provided a whale, and that whale preserved Jonah because God had a purpose. And when that whale spit him out, and when he went, when he went because God is a second chance God, and when he went in the direction that God gave him, and when he went to that great city, city of Nineveh, and began to cry out against it, the Bible says that they listened, and they humbled themselves, and they tore their clothes, and they sat in ashes. And the Bible says that God relented from the disaster that he had said he would do to bring upon them, and he did not do it. Question number five. Did God's mercy turn from judging Nineveh? If so, why? Why did God's judgment turn from Nineveh? In Jonah chapter four, it says, now watch this. You're going to see something. In Jonah chapter four, it says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. Now, have you ever seen somebody, God get a hold of somebody that you didn't care for? 
Have you ever seen God get a hold of somebody that has been a thorn in your flesh, that has spent may, maybe months or years just, just, you know, turning your world upside down? And then all of a sudden, God would speak to you and say, go tell that one about the saving power of my son, Jesus Christ. And you don't want to do it. And then finally, God forces you he, with a strong arm. He forces you to do it. And when you do it, that person changes and turns his heart to God. Will it upset you? Uh, would it upset you like it did Jonah? It says in verse 1, it, that, that when Nineveh cried out to God and repented that it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. Verse 2, so he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarsus, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. When I was reading that, I was thinking to myself, how pitiful. How pitiful that instead of God destroying a whole city, the city of Nineveh, because God's intentions was that Nineveh was not going to repent, that God was going to destroy that whole city and wipe them all out. And because God did not do that, because God was slow in, 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 in anger and he was great in mercy, the Bible says that Jonah's heart turned bitter and he said, well, how about you? You didn't take Nineveh, then how about you just take me? Therefore, it is better for me to die than to live. Then the Lord said, verse 4, is it right for you to be angry? Question number six. Is it right for us as mankind to dictate who God should and should not forgive? Think about that. Is it right for us as mankind to dictate who God should and should not forgive? And I want you to explain your answer. Verse 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a plant and made it to come up over Jonah that it might shade him from his head to deliver him from his misery. You know what? In, in all of this story, you can see in J Jonah's obedience, God always made provision. That's what I'm talking about, getting in the will of God. When you're out of the will of God, what happened? Not only did it uh, uh, endanger Jonah's life, it endangers those around you. But when he was thrown into the ocean and he surrendered and he cried out to God, God provided a whale. And the whale spit him on dry ground. God, and, and, and when he leaves Nineveh and he's angry and his sister in the, in, in the burning heat, the Bible says that God provided him and prepared him a plant. And it made him to come up over Jonah, that it might shade him from his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. Listen to this. Now you're going to see something. But as morning dawned, the next day God prepared a worm. And it was so damaged, the plant, that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Now I want you to understand something. The Lord giveth, like the book of Job says, the Lord giveth, but the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Should we not also receive bad as we do good? God, the Bible says, provided him a beautiful plant to shade himself. And he went to sleep in the comforts of that shade. But when he woke up, God provided a worm to eat that plant, then an east wind and a burning sun and it beat upon Jonah's head so that he grew faint. And then he wished death for himself and said, Is it better for me to live than die? Question number seven. True or false? In the steps God had for Jonah, did God provide a way out of the belly of the whale and a grateful plan for Jonah to show himself, to shade himself? Did God provide a way out of the belly of the whale when he cried out to God? And did God provide for Jonah a grateful plant for him to shade himself? True or false? Then God said to Jonah in verse 9, Now listen to this. Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, It is right for me to be angry, even unto death. But the Lord said in verse 10, You have pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came upon in a night and perished in a night. And should I not have pity 
on Nineveh, that great city in which you are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and much livestock? Think about what God said. You have more pity on that plant that I gave you and have taken away, and it has caused you to have anger. Should you not more have pity on the people of Nineveh, that number over 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their left, left, their right hand and their left hand and all their livestock? Question number eight. What can we learn from verses 9 through 11? Do you feel that at times we can have more concerns on the things we have lost, like earthly things, earthly possessions, but overlook the losing of one's soul. When I read this story, I think, you know, when we have lost the passion or the heartbeat of God, which is souls, when we have lost that vision, I believe that we our nation, and those that we love are in a dangerous place. I've said it before. We are God's plan. He doesn't have plan B. We are His mouthpiece. We are His hands. He speaks to us, we listen. He speaks to us, we speak. He asks us to touch the sick and to lay hands upon them, we do. He speaks to us, He touches to us. But when we come to the point where our daily life's lives based on the earthly possessions, hold more value than the souls of mankind. I really believe that we need to check ourselves. Brothers and sisters, don't run from God. Don't run from the will of God. And even if the will of God is, may cause you to be stretched or to be uncomfortable, it will fare well in the end. Remember the greater cause. Remember that. That the greater cause to Jonah's obedience was a whole nation of over 100,000 people to be saved. That was the greater cause. I hope you enjoyed today's Bible study. I ask that you would click on the link. And, and I, I'm praying that you answered the questions in the process of going through this. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. God bless you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, we ask that you would consider supporting this ministry. You can be a part of sharing the gospel to the lost through your financial support. God bless you.